Twitter hater, cloud chaser. You're mad, I'm back, big mad, he's mad, she's mad, big sad. Bah! Don't care, they mad. Bah! Bah! What's good, my Rastafarians? It's your girl Mimi, and I'm back again with another video. So, as most of y'all probably seen from the title or y'all watched my live previous to now, um, I'm here to tell the story of when I got in a car accident. So, yeah. Um, it took me a while to make this video because it's kind of an emotional subject for me, but I'm here. I'm alive. I'm doing great. So, I'm just going to share my story and... You know, it shouldn't be an emotional topic for me anymore. Um, okay, so on August 22nd of 2020, which is about a week ago, about a week and a half, two weeks ago, my best friend got married. And I'm sure most of you have seen that video because I posted it up on my page. And, um... After the wedding and everything like that, you know, we were just chilling. Um, I went over to my best friend's house. Um, we was just sitting on the porch. It's crazy because I never even made it inside because I had to drop Mo and Ava off and everything like that. So I never even made it inside. Um, literally, I was sitting on the porch. They was unloading their car when I made it there. So I'm just sitting on the porch. We just talking or whatever like that. Um, my best friend had been through a lot of stuff that day from her makeup artist canceling on her um, 30 minutes prior to her appointment. Um, just a lot of shit had went wrong on her wedding day that you don't want to happen on your special day, you know. So we was just talking about that. She was saying how she's just glad it's over. She never expected none of that to happen on her wedding day. We just in there talking or whatever. So she calls her dad. And her dad, he also lives out of town. But he was here for the wedding. So he was staying at his best friend's house, I believe, until the following day so he could head back home. So she talked to her dad or whatever. He had a birthday bottle for her and stuff like that. So I guess the liquor that people bought them, because I bought them a bottle. I know her sister bought them a bottle. I guess the liquor that people bought them, they had shared during the wedding. I mean, during the reception with other people. So when it was time to go home, they was out of liquor. They had no more liquor or whatever. So, um... She was saying how she wanted to go get her birthday bottle or whatever from her dad. So she wanted to go see her dad, basically. And um, her car don't have plates on it. So I'm like, okay, I got a rental. It got plates. It's legit. I haven't been drinking. I'm like, okay, I'll take you or whatnot. So she like, you sure? She literally, literally, y'all, her and her husband asked me when I told him I'll take her. She like, you sure you going to take us? I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm feeling like I, that's doing the right thing. You don't have place on your car. So I felt like I would have been put in a more fucked up situation if I would have rode with y'all. And it don't make sense for me to stay sitting on your porch or both of us to drive two separate cars. So I'm like, yeah, I'll take you or whatever like that. So we're on Hopkins and Hampton in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Those of you who from here, y'all know where that's at or whatever like that. So, you know, where Walgreens at in the gas station. So, we had just passed the light and we were right by the gas station. Like, the gas station right on the corner. When you pass the light, like you pull into the, you know where the gas station is right on the corner. And as soon as you pass the light, you pull into the what's name. So, there was a bus parked on the side of the gas station who was on a layover. So, basically, it was some guys in a stolen car and they ran the red light and they came flying so fast that the bus said they car shook the whole bus. But when they hit us, we was already across the street. It was just me, my best friend and her husband in the car. We were already across the street. So it was just our tail hanging out. So they ended up hitting the end of us. Like that's the dishwasher. I thought somebody was coming in the door now. But they ended up like hitting the end of the car and they hit it so hard it made us flip. The car flipped about four or five times. Literally during the flipping, like 
We felt every flip. We screaming each other name, trying to grab each other, trying to make sure everybody okay. So it ended up hitting something real hard and then it flipped and it landed. We didn't know where we was at, obviously, because we flipped. So it turned out, we couldn't get out the car at first. We're literally prying our way out the car, like busting the doors open to get out. All the air airbags had deflated and everything like that. So once I finally get out, I realized we're a centimeter away from the gas pump. If it wasn't from the, the end, that little thing, the little arch right there on the end of the gas thing, if it wasn't for that, that's what we hit and stopped us, we would have literally blew the fuck up. Literally. And we would have blew up. So that's how close we were to the gas thing. I'm going to... um. Put a photo right here of the vehicle and you can see where it's at by the gas thing so i was in shock so at the moment nothing was bothering me like i jumped up i was walking i instantly tried to get my best friend out the car because she was stuck in the car so me and her husband we're trying to get her out the car we get her out or whatever like that and i'm just like trying to make sure everybody else is okay the first thing i do is call mama I'm in shock. So, Momo didn't believe, like, I was really just in an accident. I'm like, bro, come. She like, where is, where are you? So, she finally come or whatever like that. My adrenaline was rushing. So, like, I didn't even know. I had pieces of glass sticking out my body, out my face right here. And I didn't know because I was, like, in such a panic. So, then, we sitting there. We're waiting. The police, okay, for starters... We were there for about 25 minutes before the police came. No police came, no ambulance came, no nothing. Um, Momo was super far out. And by the time she made it to me, the police had just came about three minutes prior to her coming. I called her like, so the police here, she's like, I'm down the street. She pulled right up or whatever like that. So after the police get there, that's when they like, y'all want medical attention? I'm like, no, the fuck, fuck y'all. So at this point, I'm mad. I'm like, fuck medical attention, fuck everything. I'm just at a uprage. Not to mention, let me go back. So I guess when the accident happened, only thing we were focusing on was getting out the car, but I guess it was a bystander, witness, and the bus driver who seen the guys in the car or whatever. I guess their car had shut off. So they said all they did was like, you know, turned their key and it like rare, but it didn't start. And then they did it again. It started back and they fled. They fled the scene. So a bystander like literally chased them down to get their license plates and stuff. The police had got a call stating that they see a vehicle that could have possibly been in a wreck or whatever like that. So police leave the scene. They leave and some more come. So we sitting there for about an hour, I think an hour go by now, and my adrenaline, like, it started going down. So then I'm realizing, like, okay, I'm in pain. I start feeling real lightheaded and dizzy. Everybody like, you okay? You okay? You need to go to the hospital? I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm good. I just kept feeling like I had to throw up. So then my auntie and them, they like, that's a sign of a, con a concussion. You know what I'm saying? You need to seek medical help. So I'm like, I'm not trying to go to no hospital during this COVID. So the police like, you sure you don't want to seek medical help? I tell them like, no, I'm scared to go to the hospital. I don't want to go in there with one thing, come out and it's something different. So he like, you know, we can call the ambulance or whatever. They can come here, check you out, make sure you're good or whatever. You won't have to go to the hospital. I'm like, okay, I'll accept that. So they finally come. And they say my heart rate and stuff was too high which is typical after you get in the accident, but seeing how we've been sitting there for over an hour, it should have, you know, went down by now. So they were concerned about my heart rate and everything like that, and because I felt like I had to throw up, they said it could be a possibility I had bleeding on the brain or something like that. So they wanted me to go to the hospital. I go to the hospital. Y'all, when I say scariest experience of my life of my life so because of my heart rate and the car flipping and all of that they sent me to trauma 
I don't know if y'all ever seen the movies and stuff when people get shot and stuff like that and they go through trauma and they wheeling you through the thing and they get to cutting your clothes off and all of that. That's what happened to me. And then they had like the neck thing on me. So I had to lay flat and I couldn't move because of the jerking and stuff. They were concerned about my neck and all that. So I'm laying there. I'm like, what's going on? I'm trying to figure out what's going on. They're like, ma'am, you need to relax. You need to relax. They get to cut my clothes off, sticking IVs in. I got IVs in both arms. And then it's like 12 doctors in there. They get to putting flashlights in my face and my eyes and stuff. Get to yelling out numbers. They like, B24 over 75. Nah, nah. I'm like, I get to crying. I just got tears running down my face. Because to me, they making me feel like something wrong. Because they all yelling, moving fast, cutting my clothes off and all that. I'm like, I'm good. I'm just here to get checked out. Y'all, scariest experience of my life. So then I ended up having a um, panic attack because... Two hours went by, y'all. I still had the neck thing on. I'm like, my neck is fine. I couldn't move, and I felt stuck. And at that time, it was giving me flashbacks of when I first got into the accident, and I couldn't get out the car. So I just felt stuck. I'm like, oh, my God, please get me out of here. I called my mom. I'm like, please, please. Because she had the kids, so I went to the hospital by myself. I'm like, I don't need y'all coming and getting corona because y'all got to wait in the waiting room. So, you know, y'all ain't going to be in a secure room like me. So I call her, I'm like, please call him, tell him to take it off my neck. So I have a fucking panic attack and shit, y'all. So he like, he take it off. He like, look up, look down, turn left, turn right. He got me doing all this shit. I do it. <coughs> he like, okay. So they let me take it off. <coughs> so then they have to do like a full body CAT scan and all that. And they put like this dye and it make your body hot. And it make you feel like you peeing on yourself. I'm in there crying. I'm like, something wrong. Why my body hot? They're like, it's normal. It's natural. I'm like, oh, God. Y'all freaking me out more than I already was. So, um, yeah. So, that's what pretty much happened. It's a blessing. Me, my best friend, and her husband, we all walked away walking. We could walk, y'all. We was alive and we could walk. Each and every last one of us. And from the police to the paramedics, to the doctors at the hospital, they were saying like, it was like the paramedic, he said he'd been a paramedic for 10 years. He said he'd never seen an accident to our extent and not at least one person in the car was dead or bones was broke, y'all. None of us had no broken bones, none of that. I had all minor shit. I had a brain injury. It was just like, you know, um, from the trauma, the with flash and shit like that um i had a minor concussion i had like gashes in my body and stuff from glass and stuff like that um i had 18 tissue bruising and that's what the dye stuff inside of the um cat scan and stuff that's what it's saying the bruising and stuff that was underneath on my tissue and stuff like that my pelvis had like shifted out of place but it like went back into place so it was like bruised and really sore and stuff like that but I was okay you know what I'm saying it wasn't nothing like major wrong with me like um I say the first two days I couldn't walk normal but I could walk like, you know, I had the limp and shit because of my pelvis and then my left ankle. But I was good, y'all. I didn't have no broken bones. I didn't have no nothing. Thank God. So, yeah, that was my experience with that. Mind you, I've never been in a car accident my whole life. Except one time I was with my dad and I was in a car accident. And it was something really small. You know what I'm saying? Like, he braked and the car behind us couldn't brake fast enough. So they, like hit the back of us like that. I've never been in an accident. And this was like scary. Um, the first couple days, I couldn't even get in a car. And then at nighttime, I got in a car at nighttime to go get something to eat. And I literally was just having like a meltdown. I couldn't stop crying. I couldn't breathe like, it was horrible, but I'm better now. Um, 
So yeah, there was a few people, I guess, who had like pieced stuff together and knew that one of us was in that car. They knew that that was our car from Mo previously being on live or whatever like that. So it was a few people who reached out to me and did know that I was in an accident. And most people didn't because I wasn't really ready to open up and talk about it. And at first I was going to keep it a private matter and I wasn't going to speak on it at all. But... You know, then I did want it to, then I wanted to speak on it as an eye opener. You know what I'm saying? In Milwaukee, Wisconsin, stolen vehicles is big. Like, that's big here. Baselining, all that, whatever you call it, that is a huge thing that go on in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And I just want to let these young kids and these men or whatever know, like, it ain't that serious. You know what I'm saying? You... You out here doing this and you not even worried about the consequences of what can happen. This person literally drove off. They don't know if they killed somebody. They don't know what happened. Because they left the scene. Like, that shit got to, like, hunt you. And you got to, like, deal with that shit every day. Like, I literally could have been gone. You know what I'm saying? In the blink of an eye. I got two kids. You know what I'm saying? And they was this close to being motherless because of stupidity this is what's going on out here in the world you know what i'm saying and it's just like it's fucked up it's really fucked up and it's like for one it wasn't our vehicle it was a rental so it's like you never know what you put a person through you know what i'm saying basically and people just don't care they just out here do shit for they self all they want to do is joyride, be out here. It was a Saturday night. Motherfuckers probably had just came from the club. Ain't no telling. And that was the outcome. And it's just like my best friend them, they felt so bad because they like, I was taking them somewhere. I'm like, that's not y'all fault. If anything, I felt so bad, y'all. This was these babies' wedding night. Y'all, they wedding night. They just tied the knot. They just got married. And this is going to forever be a memory on their wedding night. Their wedding night is supposed to be filled with nothing but positive and loving, beautiful memories. And look at that. The only thing I can say, like, it brought us a lot closer. Like, to experience that together, like, we literally escaped death. And it was just like, you got to realize, life is short, baby. And these motherfuckers don't give a fuck no matter how much you do right. You can go to speed limit. You can, you know, all that. You can do your part. That don't matter. That do not matter. Because at the end of the day, you inside your vehicle and you can't drive for nobody else but yourself. And it's fucked up out here. But a lot of people been asking me um, to upload pictures and asking me what happened and stuff like that. So this pretty much sums all of that up so that lets you know what happened what i experienced and you get to see the vehicle and stuff so i want to say shout out to mazda mazda am i saying it right mazda because that mazda 2020 was the shit let me tell y'all i honestly genuinely believe that car saved our life do you hear me there's no reason that car flipped, y'all, literally four, five times. And we was able to walk up out that thing. When I tell y'all they got some new new kind of airbags up in there that drop from the ceiling all the way along the side of your windows, it was like some new kind of airbag. And baby, bless y'all heart for y'all in, invention, creation. Um, you know, shit get better with time. But I tell Mo and I tell everybody, and everybody say it too, if we was in a car, or even in our car we got at home, I'll be dead. Definitely, without a doubt. And if y'all don't think there's a guy, baby, let me tell you, there he is, honey. There he is. Because there is nothing that stopped us from dying in that accident. Nothing but God. Like, for real. But, yeah, that's that. Um, yeah, it's kind of getting touchy now. 
I'm getting the I'm getting chills, y'all. I got chills. I got little bumps all on my arm. Because the more I talk about it, I can visually picture it. And I feel like I can feel it all over again. Like I'm experiencing it all over again. But you know, it's fresh. It's still new. So I'll be alright. Um I'll get through that. <coughs> Corona. No, I'm just playing. But yeah, so that's that. You know, I always try to be transparent with y'all with you guys. I let y'all know the good, the bad, the ugly, the sad. All of that. We're a family. So thank you for watching. Um make sure y'all like, comment, share. And if you already haven't, subscribe. Turn on y'all post notifications so y'all get them notifications when I'm dropping them videos. And until next time, I'll be back again. Peace.